you get one shot, one shot at life, one life. That's all you've got. And regret in and of itself, it's worthless. It does nothing for you. In fact, the only valuable thing in regret is the lesson you learned, the knowledge that you gained. But walking around filled with regret gets you nothing. So learn and move on. Don't let regret beat you down. Don't be a slave to regret. No. Let it teach you. Let it make you better. Let the fear of regret fuel you to take action today, now. To take action now to become a better person filled with knowledge and strength and power and filled with life. Some of you in this room today, you need to change your mind because some of you are thinking about giving up because you're in a season of failure. But just because you failed doesn't mean that God doesn't have a bright future in store for you. It is always too soon to quit. I don't want to just know how to make it work. I want to know why it doesn't work. And the only way I can find that out is I got to fall on my face. But guess what? The righteous man falls seven times when he gets back up. When you want something bad, you can't count the cost. Because if you count the cost and you see how much it costs, you might quit. You might give up. So you got to go in knowing that I don't count the cost. I do as many push-ups as it takes, as many sit-ups as it takes, as many reps as it takes. I study as long as it takes. I pay whatever the price is. Every one of my successes is stacked on top of failures. You need to get a revelation day that the joy is not in the success. The joy is in trying. The joy is in the process. But I'm going to keep working. I'm going to keep going at it. Only those who are willing to risk going too far can possibly find out how far one can go. Failure is forming my future. Failure is just another peg in the ladder for me to go higher. Failure is part of the story. It's pushing you forward. You just do what you got to do on this one. And then you look back when it's all over and you see the reward. You look back and you see the account. You don't count it. You just look back and you see what you see. Don't give your territory over to the enemy. Now, in order to have territory, you have to have ownership. And the problem with you is that you might own territory that you don't even realize. That God has given you certain things up under your auspices and up under your authority that you've got to be prepared to fight for. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And you're waiting, and you're waiting, and you're waiting, and you're waiting tired. Does anybody know what it's like to be tired? Trying to hold your head up, but you're tired. Trying to be tough. And one by 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 one, they all went to sleep. Not just the foolish. I don't care how smart you are, you still get tired. I don't care how committed you are, you still get tired. I don't care how focused you are, you still get tired. Is there anybody here that can talk to me about tired? I don't mean the kind of tired you get at night. I mean the kind of tired where you wake up tired, go to work tired, eat your lunch tired, answer the phone tired, smiling tired, may I help you? Grinning and be praise the Lord and tired and nobody knows that you are tired. Some of you don't understand why you are so tired right now, but you don't realize you're just counting your workload from what is happening right now. But you have to remember that the oil started burning when you started hoping. It didn't just start when you started doing. It started when you started believing something is about to happen in my life. I'm going to get up. I'm going to go forward. I'm going to get out of there. And all of a sudden, the oil is burning. 
you. You have to burn some oil to be able to wait. The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount upon wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You have to be tough to wait. You have to be tough to work all day and go to school at night. You have to be tough to take two part-time jobs and put them together and try to make it do Oh, y'all don't understand what I'm talking about. You have to be tough to start a service in a storefront with two members and the bills are higher than you got. You have to be tough. Is there anybody in here that's gone through a tough time in your life and, and you were waiting on a breakthrough to occur in your life? Yeah, yeah. Same place. They all were waiting. They all went to sleep. You couldn't tell who was wise and who was foolish until the cry was made. The thing you've been waiting on is coming. How you react to challenges tells whether you are wise or foolish. And you will never completely be healed or whole until you change the voice inside of your own head. Most people are governed by their habits, their fears, and the opinions of others. A lot of people never try anything differently because they have been convinced by people in their lives that they value that they can't do it. They're living within the context of the opinions that other people have of them, the low expectations. Many people doubt themselves. Because when they thought about doing something at some critical point in their lives, somebody they respected and honored, somebody they believed in, somebody that they loved, someone they trusted said, you can't do that. And they accepted that. As you look at your life, ask yourself the question, what would your life be like? What would your life look like if you decided not to care what people thought of you? What would your life be like if you decided to give up some of your fears? What would your life be like if you decided to become courageous? What would your life be like if you decided to act on your dream, if you did what you felt in your heart? You know what courageous means? Tom Ruskin and Randy Reed said, they said that courage comes from a French word which means of the heart. But how does it feel to you? He says, it's courage, you know, it takes courage to, to live. Because most people go through life not allowing themselves to step out because they don't want to let go. They don't want to be blown around. They don't want to be moved. The courage to face life's whirling wind of contradictions. The courage to love yourself. The courage to love. For years, I was afraid to love. The courage to take a chance. The courage to be who you are. He says, courage isn't for somebody else, for medals, applause, or moral debts. Courage is what, at that moment, feels most right for you. Not just situational ethics, but what feels right in your heart. The word of the heart. What feels right in your heart. One great philosopher says, cowards die many times before their deaths. The valiant never taste of death but once. What does that mean? That valiant people aren't afraid? No, no, no. It means that they experience that fear and they move forward. They move forward anyhow. Many people are dead now. Many people are allowing their dreams to die. Many people are allowing their ideas to lie dormant and collect dust. Many people have all this talent and ability that they are lying to be in, buried inside of them, that they will take with them to their graves because they didn't have the courage to be who they are. And I say as you begin to look toward the future and manifesting your greatness, it's going to take everything in you, everything in you, that your life deserves the concentrated effort to begin to look at how is it that I can express more of me how is it that I can bring my ideas out here now? How is it? And start living with a sense of urgency because you're here today. You're gone today. 
Life is unpredictable. It's uncertain. There are no guarantees. No guarantees out here at all. So holding back, what are you waiting on? Ask yourself, what's the benefit of your waiting? What's the benefit of your not living your dream? What's the benefit of not listening to yourself? Oh, please, listen to yourself. You know the feelings, if you start listening to the feelings in your heart, and I'm doing it now more every day, I find that my feelings, I can trust them. And I say to you, that as you look toward the future, you look at life on a daily basis, if there's something that you have been given, if you've heard something within yourself that you know that, that what you're doing now doesn't fit for you, it doesn't work for you, it's not giving you what you want, and there's something else that you want to do, don't allow that inner doubt in you to talk you out of it. To build a case on why you can't have it. To tell you why you're not good enough. You ignore that inner voice. And all of the external voices. Don't judge the possibilities for what you can do based upon the circumstances. Because the circumstances won't determine who you are. Don't determine what you're able to do based upon your resources. Don't determine what's possible for you based upon where your life is right now. Where your life is right now is not you. That's just what it is right now. But the possibilities for you are unlimited. If you're in a rebuilding process, it's unlimited. If you're coming back from adversity and devastation, it's unlimited of what you can do. That's the capacity of human beings. It doesn't matter how many mistakes you've made. It doesn't matter how many flops you've had. Doesn't matter how much money you've lost. In fact, I see it only as an investment of what you learn from life. Not loss, but investments of what's possible for you. And I say to you that once you start listening to yourself and as you begin to act on your dream, as you start just trying to find your way, doing what you can, with what you have, you will start seeing things opening up for you. You'll start attracting people. You say, where'd they come from? Things will start coming together, clicking for you. You say, whoa, you start brainstorming. Ideas will come out of nowhere as you focus on it. The key to it is to begin to focus on what it is you want to do. Why, Les? Why is that important? Because as you focus on that which you want to do, that which we focus on, that which we give our energy to, it will begin to multiply. It will begin to expand. It will begin to develop your consciousness. And out of that comes your greatness. Out of that comes a commitment. Out of that comes a passion for life. Out of that comes a special power that you have in you that you haven't even called on yet. See, the, the powers that we have will never reveal themselves if we don't challenge them. If we don't put ourselves in a position where we have to use them. So one of the most important things is reading a book that's a really interesting book called Instant Millionaire. And the guy said, put yourself in a position where you can't retreat. Where it's do or die, sink or swim. Here's what you'll find out. You'll develop incredible swimming skills. You'll find yourself stroking unlike you've ever seen before. Through the inspiration of desperation, you'll become more creative than ever before. So what is it? How do we handle that whole piece? Throw your whole self into it. See, most people go at it tentatively. They don't give all their stuff. They don't concentrate. They don't put everything they've got in them. One guy wrote a book called, All You Can Do Is All You Can Do. And all you can do is enough. But he said, make sure you do all you can do. And if we are honest this evening, we know that we haven't done all we can do. So as we look at the future, we can decide that from this day forward, as I look at my personal relationships, if I look at my professional relationships, if I look at my family relationships, as I look at all the dimensions of my life, looking at myself mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, I'm going to do all I can do to develop me to bring my talent out here, to make a contribution to life. 